Hello, and welcome to my channel, How to Learn. So I decided to make this channel when I understood or realized that learning how to learn and improving on your learning skills is something that really can make a difference in your life in general, in your career, if, you, if you're into this kind of, of success. I've been in the top of my class since the day I started school and until I graduated from med school about 18 years later. And I've always, almost always scored in the top 99th percentile of my exams, especially during med school. So this has been the product of, well, maybe some genes early on in my life, but probably as I learned and grew up, I started to understand exactly what I'm doing and that learning is something that you can really learn. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the skills that or the processes that I particularly were, was doing when I was studying uh, for every subject. And I want to give, I will keep giving examples, particularly when I was studying during med school. So today I'm going to talk about two things that I believe are extremely essential as a start for anyone who wants to change the way they learn. And these two things I describe in these words. One, concept. Please pardon my bad handwriting. Concepts, okay? And number two, active learning. So these are two things that in my opinion can make a huge difference to the way you learn. In regards to concepts, what do I mean by concepts? Now, in every science, the information that you're supposed to learn can simply be divided by a pie chart into concepts that you need to understand. And then a big chunk are details. And the percentage of detail to concept ratio varies from one science to another. But in my opinion, in most fields, if you want to improve really well at these fields, the amount of details becomes higher than the amount of concepts. Sometimes you understand the idea of stock exchange, for example, but there are so many intricate details that make you diff makes a difference between an expert and an amateur. So as you grow more and more in your learning process, the amount of details will exponentially rise. However, our brains aren't designed to store a lot of random details. Instead, they are prefer understanding concepts. And what do I mean by concepts? Concepts are pretty much patterns. They are pretty much patterns. By saying a pattern, it's a way that can simplify a big chunk of information. For example, if you look at this numerical pattern, which starts with one, then two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, you can actually start understanding there's a pattern in these numbers. You can describe it in any way you would like, but you can actually extrapolate and continue this information and know that the next number is supposed to be 128. Or you can use a calculator and just gonna multiply two with, with 64 and you will find the next number. So this is not actually a string of seven numbers. This is not how your brain is going to store it. Your brain is gonna say, you start from one and you multiply by two. 
So this is a much smaller piece of information. To your brain, this is not a string of seven numbers. It's gonna take a smaller part of your brain and less effort to actually learn about or learn this pattern and actually repeat it in the future. However, when you start putting numbers like say two, 61, five, three, seven, seven, and I'm just gonna throw in an eight at the beginning. It's not easy to find a pattern for this. And it slowly becomes a, a string of about seven numbers. And I say about because some people will look at 61 as two numbers or two digits. So the randomness in this string of numbers makes it difficult for your brain to actually memorize or even predict. And in order for you to memorize it, it's gonna take more effort. It's gonna look like a phone number that you're trying to memorize. And you will make the shortcut of storing it on your phone or on a note. Which is a lazy way of doing brain work. Or you start trying to figure out a certain pattern that can help you memorize this number for a long amount of time. You might connect it to something you know, to, a, uh, to the number of your, your phone number, if it's similar in, 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 in a certain fashion. Let's say your phone number is 8262-5377. Your brain will immediately detect that, okay, there's a tiny difference between what I know and what I am about to learn. In other words, it's much easier to learn patterns, that is, concepts, than to learn details. Those are easier. So my idea was to do the easy work as much as possible for most of my time, and then try to predict the details based on these patterns and concepts. So figuring out the details of a subject becomes more of a function of prediction rather than pure memorization. And this reduces the effort, the time needed to do that. How did I particularly do, did it? Well, there are different ways of learning concepts, but to me, it was a thought process that completely happened in my head. Here's an example for you to make it a bit easier for my idea. So in medicine, there's a group of diseases known as vasculitides or just vasculitis. Okay, and I'm pretty sure anyone in the medical field is going to, to feel bad when they hear this word. Vasculitis is a group of diseases which describes inflammation in blood vessels. And you can actually know that from the name of the disease. And this is knowing something from the name of a disease is, a, is an example of what I'm talking about. Instead of memorizing these two pieces of information, you convert them into one piece of information if you know the origin of this word. So vascule means abyssal, and lytis suggests inflammation. And it's a group of diseases. And there are about like 20 or 12 diseases. I don't, I don't know. They're really different from each other. And each one of them has its own signs and its own features and its own details. And they are like really, really complicated shapes that are completely different from each other. So to me, that's a lot of detail. That's a lot of effort. So what I try to do in order to understand what these are, I will go back in a thought process and try to understand what are the concepts in retrospect that arise from the details that I am learning. 
So that's like richer prediction. You're trying to figure out the patterns or concepts in the details, and then in the future, you start generating the details by prediction. So what are these concepts? I say to myself, let's go back to the basics and see, well, these are vessels. And we know that vessels can be arteries, can be capillaries, and can be veins. And then you start learning that there are big arteries and small arteries, and some of, and some of these arteries, they go into the bowels, some of them go to the kidneys, some of the, them go to the brain and the heart and so on. And then you try to group these diseases into categories based on which part of the vessel they're going to affect. And by knowing which group of vessels are going to be affected, you can predict the organs, and you can predict the symptoms, and you can predict the complications of these diseases rather than knowing the details of every disease without understanding why they are there. And another example, I go and grab a book that talks about vasculitis. And I just read it like I'm reading a story. I don't make a significant effort to, to memorize the details and the differences and the names between each subject. When I finish this chapter, I close the book and I go and I go in a mental journey of a thought process where I try to figure out the concepts of what I was reading. What are the basic ideas that I just learned? What are the patterns that I can use to generate the details? And without looking at anything but my brain, I try to figure out the concepts and I slowly try to remember the details. And I start giving out these details as if I'm explaining a lecture to an invisible audience. I try to repeat what I just learned and try to go as detailed as I can just by the concepts that I mentioned. By the end of this process, I end up with a number of products. The first product is concepts, which is the thing that I want. The second product is details that I could generate from these concepts. But the third products are things that I forgot. Things that my concept network was not efficient or sufficient to produce those details. And when I went back to the book, I was okay, so I didn't, I missed that, I missed that, I missed this entire part. Okay, I could not remember this picture. And also, there are other things that do not make sense. So these are the products of my thought process. We have the concepts and the details that are gener generated by the concepts. Then we have two problems, things that I forgot and things that don't even make sense. For the things that I forgot, this probably would require a repetition process because probably repetition is the best way to remember the things that you forget. I might misspell repetition, but you get the idea. But for the things that do not make sense, I describe them as random details. Pretty much like the second string of numbers that was completely random. And these, they just require pure memory work. But by doing this process over and over, I try to reduce the amount of the things that do not make sense and reduce the amount of random detail so that by the end of the day, this pie chart becomes three components. So we have the concepts 
and then the things that can be predicted from these concepts. And then you get the random details that require pure memorization. By doing this process over and over, the percentage of random memorization becomes smaller. Sometimes the percentage of concepts starts growing as you learn more and more. And it's a very nice and beautiful process in which your brain becomes very good at this subject. After I did this process for several years, I was able to reach a point where my brain acted like an encyclopedia. I could remember a vast amount of details about so many subjects without needing to refer to a reference. But this is not a superpower. All I did was start with a concept and move in a very systematic way towards the details that I'm looking for. Pretty much like a search engine, I could reach the detail that I wanted by knowing my starting point. In my brain, there was a map of patterns that could make sense to me very easily, and I could remember the most intricate details if these details could make sense. And by repetition, I could also establish a nice chunk of random details that I could complement the information that I know. A final analogy for today's video is that when you do a puzzle, the puzzle contains a picture in it. And this picture is a picture of a bird, for example. And for your brain, you can simplify this massive amount of information, a picture, into a, a very simple concept, a bird. A concept that is already established in your head, and you can regenerate it countless number of times in the future. But the challenge in, in a puzzle is that they start cutting it into pieces to convert it into a group, a string of seemly, seemingly random pictures. But they give you the concept, which is the bird, and they ask you to put these details that are seemingly random together based on the concept that you know. And for your brain, when you look at a single piece of a puzzle, you can't figure out where this belongs. But by comparing it to the other pieces, you start making sense out of it. Okay, so that's a bad piece. So you start making sense from it. And by looking at the different pieces, your brain starts generating an understanding that, okay, I can see this pattern. And you start putting these puzzle pieces together until you finally get your beautiful bird picture. And you can do it in both directions. You can use the details to generate the picture, or you can use the picture to generate the details. Thank you for watching. And in the next videos, I'm going to talk about the active learning component and several important skills for learning, doing exams, and just be a good learner in the future.